two of them happen to be the, the big hit ones. Mm. Uh, but the role of Judas is, is another huge one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's a big, both Jesus and Judas are big rock scenes. Yeah. There's plenty to get your teeth into there. It'll be it, interesting to see who yeah, the yeah, cast yeah. are finally. Yeah. It will be. Yes, OK. Well, no, uh, Lev Never Dies is out on Monday the 12th of March. OK, well, last week a doctor from London became possibly the oldest expert to give evidence in court. That doctor was William Franklin and he's still working at the grand old age of 99. Justin Rowlett has been to meet him. Do you suffer from hay fever or asthma? These are allergies. We may think of allergies as a modern-day phenomenon, <coughs> but doctors have been trying for decades to discover the various causes. In 1912, a pioneer was born, a man who would dedicate his life to treating allergies of all kinds. And he worked here at St Mary's. Bill Franklin, now aged 99, has been leading the charge ever since his early days at St Mary's Hospital London, working alongside Sir Alexander Fleming, the man who discovered penicillin. Amazingly, Bill Franklin is still practicing, and his contribution to science means he could just be the greatest Briton that you have never heard of. You were the man who developed the famous pollen count. How did that happen? Well, we had this Hay, special hay fever clinic where patients came to the allergy clinic who only had a seasonal hay fever. And I had one particularly annoying patient who said, I know the cause of my hay fever, hay fever is due to roses. And I said to her, roses do not put pollen in the air. So from that moment onwards, I decided I had to teach people what was in the air. And nowadays, if you look at your weather forecast, you've got the pollen count in. I'm sure hay fever sufferers, though, don't need me to tell them we have high pollen levels at the moment. You fought during the Second World War, didn't you? I joined up in the army three days before war started, because I thought war was going to start. I will be in the right place at the right time. Uh, but then you ended up being imprisoned by the Japanese. That's right, yes, at Singapore. And how long were you in prison for? Three and a half years. Did you continue to practice medicine? Very much so. In fact, I knew personally the name of every single man in that camp. You were so close, you really did know them very personally. I'm lucky I survived and lots of my friends and people didn't survive, so I always count my blessings. He's had a remarkable influence on, on the whole discipline, not just in this country, but worldwide. Bill has devoted over 70 years to medicine and even put his life on the line for the sake of allergy research. When you have a very severe reaction, you have a feeling of impending doom. In other words, you think you're going to die. But I wanted to know what would happen to me if an insect bit me that I'd never met before. First bite caused no trouble, next bite a slight bump 48 hours later on my skin. The eighth bite, I noticed that the ceiling had gone black. My blood pressure had disappeared, but I found that I hadn't got a pulse. I did the experiment on myself. Uh, I couldn't do it on a patient because Potentially, it was dangerous. The sister of the ward saw me and said, oh, I know you've done silly experiments on yourself. I'll give you adrenaline. And within about a minute, I decided I was going to live and not die. Not afraid to take risks, this remarkable doctor has helped improve the lives of millions of allergy sufferers. One of the amazing things is that he really predicted that the range of substances and things that people would be allergic to would increase, and particularly drug allergy. Now, of course, you worked with Alexander Fleming. What was it like working with him? As far as I was concerned, he was a marvellous man. We got on extremely well together. You did have a disagreement over a key publication, though, didn't you? It was about how if more people were prescribed penicillin, there would be more allergic reactions to the drug. He wrote a famous book on penicillin. I was made to write a chapter in his book. He got out his pen and, and crossed out my last sentence and he said the more recent penicillin preparations really cause local or general reactions and that's what's in the book. So with hindsight who was right? Well I must say that I, I, I think I was right. <laughs> he just inspired me and he's always always inspired me and he's taught those who have taught me. He was a father figure I think he's probably become the grandfather figure now that he's 99. I may retire when I'm a hundred but whether I will even retire then, I don't know. 
and Dr. Bill Franklin joins us now. Well, what an incredible career as we saw there in the film. But one thing they didn't mention is that you once treated Saddam Hussein, didn't you? You were flown over to the Iraqi embassy because of your expertise in allergies. Yes, I was sent out as an allergist, but he wasn't allergic on any definition of allergy. He'd been wrongly treated. Uh, and I treated him correctly, and therefore he is my most grateful patient I've ever had. Gosh, and, and, and can you tell us what was wrong with him, yeah. Bill? Well, yes, I suppose. If he wasn't sleeping or praying, he was smoking. Ah. So ah. he smoked and smoked and smoked, and that was his real trouble. Yeah. Yes. Well, sorry, no, go sorry you go, I was just going to say, we were allies with Saddam Hussein then. Do you regret treating him now or not? Is that just what you did as a doctor? Uh, I mean, I, I was... If you see... If you call as a doctor, it doesn't matter who the person is, he's a patient. Yeah. I mean, he was the head of the state and all the rest of it. But as far as I was concerned, he was a patient and I wanted to help him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bill, we heard there in the film, lots of people call you now, the, the grandfather figure of this line of medicine. So what do you think of all the youngsters that are coming through and are going to take on all of your work? Well, I think so many of the younger people haven't really been taught enough about allergy, which is a very common disease, and it's becoming commoner. I mean, just yeah. something like seasonal hay fever. You know, we don't know why allergy is becoming commoner, but it is. And my worry is, although this country does very good research, with a lot of the GPs and other people know so little about how to diagnose it and treat it. Yeah. Well, you better not retire then. What will we do without you? <laughs> um, and Bill, of course, is 100 years old on the 19th of March, aren't you? So yes. Yeah. Don't go testing any treatments between now and your birthday. That's all I say. Lovely to see you. And all the very best, Bill. All the very best. Now, it's fair to say that spring has definitely sprung. Uh, he's the evidence.